I'm a lifetime WordPress user and I'm finally trying Webflow. I've seen some stellar websites built in Webflow and I've been curious about it for many years. When I played around with it in the past, I felt overwhelmed as soon as I get to the page editor. But I wanted to put effort into learning the basics of Webflow and see if it might make sense to make the switch for my websites. But why Webflow? After all, I've seen impressive sites built by many website builders, including WordPress, which I already use. Well, Webflow has had a long-standing reputation for being the no-code website builder for designers. WordPress, on the other hand, has always been heavy and bloated. You can get a clean looking site in WordPress, but you're probably gonna use quite a few third-party plugins to accomplish this. Webflow appears to be like the Photoshop for websites. Everything is drag and drop, everything can be fine-tuned, and everything can be optimized. And that's one of the benefits to a closed source project. WordPress is open source, meaning it can be infinitely modified and customized by third-party products. Webflow is just the opposite. Their focus is on efficiency and optimization, and they boast that you can still style your site exactly how you want without having to worry about bloated code. The biggest disadvantage to a closed source project is pricing. WordPress is free and open for everyone, and you can host it anywhere you'd like. While Webflow does offer a free plan, it's more of a trial plan to get a feel for the platform. Webflow requires an $18 a month plan to host your site on a custom domain, and you'll need to upgrade to the $29 a month plan to access any of the CMS features. It is possible to host a Webflow site on your own web hosting, but it has to be a completely static site. You can't use any of the CMS features, you can't use any forms, and anytime you make a modification, you're gonna have to go and manually upload the files to your web hosting every time. And you still need a $28 a month plan just to export the code. So Webflow is expensive. It may not be a fit for personal projects or startups on a tight budget. But for some businesses, the pricing of Webflow may be completely worth it if you're gonna get a superior website over WordPress. And both the $18 a month and $29 a month plans support up to 250,000 page views per month. The $58 growth plan at WP Engine only supports up to 100,000 page views per month, and additional page views will cost even more. So if you have a high traffic site, Webflow might actually save you money over WordPress. I got to work playing around with Webflow, and I gotta say, the onboarding process was pretty intense. They immediately throw you into a guided tutorial and give you a lot of information as soon as the page editor loads. This is usually where I felt overwhelmed and given up in the past, but if you have a basic understanding of CSS and HTML, I think you'll get along just fine with Webflow if you invest a little bit of time into learning the basics. I was disappointed initially by the lack of free templates given the pricing of the platform. There are a ton of nice looking paid templates, but the free options don't come close compared to other website builders like Squarespace and Wix. But then I discovered something I really like. There are a significant amount of free layouts available to build pages from scratch. So while there aren't a ton of free full site templates available to import, there's no shortage of pre-made elements and sections that you can pull from and build nice looking pages from scratch. For tech savvy users who aren't the best at design such as myself, having some layouts to pull from to aid in the page design process is extremely helpful. This is something WordPress does well through third party themes and block packs. And it looks like Webflow is just starting to adopt this concept with the libraries feature currently in beta. And honestly, the more I played around with Webflow, the more I started to see its value. Don't get me wrong, I still feel overwhelmed by the fire hose of customizable options in the sidebar on the right, but there's one thing I noticed right away. Webflow is a powerful website builder where all the settings are centralized. One of the biggest problems with WordPress is that settings can be scattered across all different parts of the UI. Different page builders, different plugins, different setting screens. It's a mess. Changing something like a brand color across your entire website can be a massive ordeal. Webflow takes advantage of a style library, so you can change the style of a button and transform all buttons that use the same style with a few clicks. It works similarly to how you can transform the color of that subscribe button with a single click. It's free to hit subscribe and click the bell and you'll be the first to know about newer videos. There's also a variables tab that allows you to create variables for sizes, colors, and fonts. You can nest these variables into any style and this allows you to change things like your brand color or primary font with a single click. But one thing that really bothers me is that you can't change any of the CSS generated by Webflow. If you roll over a style in the library, it'll show a tooltip that shows the exact
exact CSS text being generated by Webflow, but you can't click into it and you can't make any changes. You can, however, create your own CSS classes in the custom code section of the site settings, then you can apply these classes to any elements you'd like. So it is possible to add your own CSS, but it's just not the most intuitive in the editor. Once you're done with the hardcore design phase of your website, Webflow offers an editor mode that allows you to change static and dynamic content on your website without all of the overwhelming customization options. This could potentially be useful for those clients who say, I want to be able to make basic changes to my website, but you know that most website builders are just going to be overwhelming to them, and they may end up breaking something by accidentally changing a style without realizing it. With this editor mode, it really is easy enough for the average person to go in and make basic changes to their website without any prior knowledge of Webflow. So up to this point, Webflow has impressed me, but everything I've done so far is related to building static pages. So how does the content management functionality work? Instead of Webflow offering a blog feature like WordPress does, they offer a CMS collections feature that lets you create your own customized data sets for anything. It could be for a blog, portfolio, menu item, recipe, or event. You can really customize it however you'd like. I selected the template for blog posts just to get a feel for how the content management system works. And this is where things started to fall flat for me. Comparing the blog post experience to what you get in WordPress, Webflow is basic to say the least. Sure, you've got everything you need to make a blog post. You can give your post a name, customize the slug, type your content, and include a featured image. But the actual post body field leaves a lot to be desired. There's no option to change text color, there's not a native way to create tables, and uploading images and videos doesn't create blocks that you can easily drag around like in Gutenberg. Instead, I found myself fighting with the interface to try and get things placed where I wanted it, kind of like how it used to be with the WordPress Classic Editor. Only, at least with that editor, you could access the raw HTML and move an element manually if you couldn't get it situated otherwise. So the post body editor definitely has room for improvement. Then I started wondering about SEO for individual blog posts. I couldn't find a way to specify an SEO title and description for each post. This is something I do all the time in WordPress with Yoast SEO, and I think it's a useful practice for blogs that want to rank higher in Google search. I figured there had to be a way to have unique metadata on a per blog post basis, so I decided to do some research and I found that it is possible. You just have to add a meta title and meta description field to your collection, then go to the master SEO field for the collection and insert your meta title and meta description variables. This is not too difficult to set up, but I really wonder why Webflow doesn't make blog post SEO easier out of the box. There are some third party apps to make writing and SEO for blogs more approachable in Webflow, but then you're getting into costly add-ons. Another thing not supported by default is a comments section on blog posts. This, once again, requires third party software to set up. Now, the flip side to the CMS collections feature is that it is completely customizable. I wish it worked better out of the box for blogs, but the thing is awesome for other types of data. Using CMS collections, you could dynamically build a restaurant menu using menu items stored in the CMS. The possibilities are endless. Webflow also has a forms feature built in to create contact forms, feedback forms, and any other type of forms. You can have Webflow send an email every time there's a new submission, or even add the data to a CMS collection. The forms feature even has a CAPTCHA option, so you have everything you need to make an ideal contact form built in. WordPress always requires a third-party plugin to create contact forms, and adding the submission details to a database is usually another plugin, using CAPTCHAs is sometimes another plugin, and if you want email notifications to be delivered reliably, you typically want to use another third-party plugin with a transactional email service to ensure that this doesn't end up in your spam folder. Webflow is doing all of these things included in the forms feature in all paid plans. Now, there are even more dynamic features included in Webflow, such as user accounts, e-commerce, and site localization. I'm not going to get into these features in this video or we'd be here all day. So why would you want to choose Webflow? Well, Webflow is a great option for anyone with a background in CSS and HTML who wants a convenient drag and drop page editor that generates optimized, efficient code. Webflow is great for landing pages, portfolios, corporate sites, and
and even small business sites. If you're frustrated with the bloated, slow performance of WordPress due to the dozens of third-party plugins required just to make your site function, Webflow may be for you. Webflow is a bit too advanced for beginners, so it's not something that can really be compared to platforms like Squarespace or Wix. If you're already comfortable using WordPress, I'd say you can pick up Webflow with a little time and determination. Webflow is great if you need to design an infinite amount of static pages for different projects. That's when a workspace plan makes sense, because you can pay one fee for up to 10 sites or unlimited sites and host the landing pages on your own web hosting to avoid the costly $18 a month fee per website. Just be aware that you cannot use any CMS, forms, or other dynamic features if you choose to use the code export feature and self-host your website. But who is Webflow not for? Well, it's definitely not for everyone. I was pretty disappointed by the lackluster blogging experience. Even though I think the CMS features are more powerful than WordPress out of the box, they just aren't optimized with blogging in mind. There's a reason that WordPress is the golden standard for blogs and news sites, and I've always thought that's the thing that WordPress does best. The Webflow CMS will do the trick if you're gonna have occasional blog posts here and there, but if your website has any emphasis whatsoever on blogging, I would either recommend having a separate WordPress install on a subdomain or using WordPress entirely for your whole website. Webflow is also expensive. If you want any dynamic features, you'll be paying a minimum of $29 a month per website, and that may not be practical if you have multiple sites under your brand. So after experimenting with Webflow, am I going to keep using it for my websites? I have to say that I'm open to it in the future. I'm not eager to drop everything and redesign all my websites in Webflow, and there are some websites that I want in WordPress for the blogging features, but for landing pages and portfolio sites, I'd be open to choosing Webflow in the future future when it's time to redesign those sites anyway. I am a bit hesitant to switch sites over just due to the costly per site pricing, but as my business grows, it will be easier to justify the price. But whether you choose Webflow or WordPress for your site, you'll want to host it on a custom domain. I used to recommend Google domains, but sadly they were just acquired by Squarespace. So if you're wondering where the best place is to register your domain, you can check out this video.